Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday. This week, we have with us Kaisa Martiskainen. Hey, Kaisa, welcome back. Hey, Vasco. Thanks for having me back. So Tuesday is, uh, of course, Team Tuesday here on the podcast. But before we dive into the team universe, do share with us, what's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? That is a, that is a tough question because I feel like there are so many. Um, and I maybe just want to quickly mention a couple. And then I'll talk a little bit more about one that was maybe the most influential me. So I know a book that has been mentioned many times on this podcast, which is The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni, is is a really, really important book and it has influenced me a lot. So it is definitely one of my favorites. And another one that's not exactly a book, but it's it's a research paper and certain related writings. And this is actually by a Finnish philosopher called Esa Saarinen. And the research paper is about systems intelligence. So it's essentially connecting engineering thinking with human sensitivity. So his writings have been have been very, very transformative in 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 my work. And um, and while while there's there's I don't think there's a there's a book that people could look for or check out, but it's uh, it's definitely worth googling systems intelligence. There's a research paper online available about that. Um, uh, so then I'd say yeah, the the book that's most important to me is probably the Coaching Habit by Michael Bungay Stanier. And um, like we discussed before, one of my real challenges in my Scrum Master Scrum Master career is is the fact that like, my knee jerk reaction is to is to always help someone immediately when they when they ask for for help and um, gotta always be there when someone someone needs needs support. So um, so. Th- this this book about coaching and actually the book outlines these seven questions that are the questions that every coach should always always ask the person that they're coaching or a person who's asking them for for help and support and um i think i mean i can't remember exactly how the seven seven questions are but they're along the lines of like what's on your mind and what else is on your mind and what is the real challenge here for you what do you want out of this how do you think I can help you um and I think the the last two questions I I don't think I can remember correctly but it's like asking these questions has, has helped me with my communications with people become much more precise and effective and also, when someone comes to me to ask for help, um, these questions and going through these questions with that person allow that person to take responsibility uh, for and, and own their own responses and actions in a way. So oftentimes, people come to me asking for help, but after we go through these seven coaching questions, they realize that maybe they don't really need my help after all. So these questions have been immensely helpful for me because they allow me to hold myself back from just immediately helping someone and uh, tackling their problem because that is my knee-jerk reaction. And most of the time, um, most of the time, the person who's asking for help uh, also realizes that they already have everything that they need to solve their own problem or in some cases that maybe it is someone else whose help they need and it's not actually not actually me so I feel like although like coaching or being a coach is just one aspect and one part of a scrum master agile coaches work but it is it is such an important 
it is such an important part. And sometimes we are too eager to to jump into conclusions because we know how we can help these people. But it's so important, uh, like it is part of our job to to help these people to come to those conclusions themselves uh, instead of us giving them the answer. And and one of the reasons is what you already mentioned, which is that when they take action, they take responsibility. And uh, when we take action for them, we are taking responsibility for them. And of course, that also means that they are not, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I think right. this, uh, this uh, self-awareness that you described, like, you know, being aware of your, what you call knee-jerk reaction or the uh, dominant pattern uh, in, in your Scrum Master role, I think this is very important as well, like being aware of this and then finding uh, methods, approaches like the seven questions of the coaching habit that help us to step out of that pattern, even though it might be the most natural pattern for us. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, and like you said, when someone when someone uh, makes a decision for themselves, it also, I mean, if that decision leads into some kind of failure, then at least they made that decision. So, I mean, it's also part of the taking responsibility thing. So I think it's much easier to to deal with that deal with that failure when you know that it was actually your decision you considered um all the different aspects of your issue or your problem and you came into this decision instead of someone else telling you like oh you yeah, should because then it's their this problem direction. right <laughs> right yeah so, Kaisa, that, that's, um, I don't know if we're going to talk about a similar story now that we dive into the teams, uh, but definitely like the, the role of uh, taking responsibility or even acknowledging responsibility is very important in our relationship with the teams and, and how they can grow. Um, so let's dive into one of those stories, the story of a team. Tell us a little bit about the context, maybe team size kind of project, and then walk us through like this small patterns of behavior that maybe started small in the beginning, but over time grew and created big problems for that team. Uh, sure. So so this was actually, this is actually a story of a few individuals that almost destroyed a team with uh, with their behaviors, and there were two two different kinds of behavior that were really detrimental to that team. So, a little bit of context is that um, this was actually not not a team that normally normally worked together. So, this was um, this was like a temporary temporary team that was put together to um to discover or rather rediscover a problem that we had had in the larger organization so in this organization we mainly we we work with uh with uh observability monitoring um and one of the one of the big issues that was there was that we were using certain monitoring tools uh, to monitor customer environments, and those tools were sending us a lot of different alerts. And the issue was that some of those alerts were very important, and they needed to be taken action on. Whereas some of the alerts were they, they didn't mean anything, um, so and they we were had like no noise, way basically, of basically right. Right. There was there was a lot of noise. And uh, then our support teams, they didn't know which which. uh, Yeah, they were just flooded with this noise, all these alerts, and they didn't know which alerts they should take action on. Um, So there was obviously a big, big issue, big issue there. So um, and this was part of part of this experiment where myself and my colleague we wanted to introduce different kind of agile ways of working um, into our organization. And we thought that just trying to rediscover this problem and uh, see if we could put together a temporary team to, to tackle this issue. And while it wasn't strictly development work, some of the work was more operational, I'd say. We thought that if we if we uh, came up with 
with a couple of potential solutions if we looked at this problem from several different angles and spent uh, came up with some some hypotheses and then spent two weeks at a time trying to see if our hypotheses were correct or or if not so we put together a team of uh, some like subject matter experts um, and people who could who could serve as these spokes spokespeople for all these different parts of the organization that this issue touched upon. So for us, it was very important to 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 make sure that our solution would would really positively affect all these different parts of the organization that were having this problem. So we wanted all these different points of view. And um, so once we put the put the team together, started having these regular regular uh, scrum meetings with them. Um, there was one particular person who was an absolute expert on the monitoring tool uh, itself, and um, this type of person is a person who I guess most companies or most work environments have this kind of person. So some people consider them a kind of a genius. Yeah, a and hero. They are. They're just absolute. Yeah, they're a hero. They're brilliant, but more often than not, they don't have great people skills. Mm-hmm. But people tolerate them because they are so brilliant and they bring so much value with their knowledge. So this was this was one of these people, and um, I mean, I thought we were we were pretty lucky to have him because we could use his knowledge. But from the very beginning when we when we were coming up with these problem statements for different parts of the organization he he went ahead and created this powerful powerpoint presentation where he outlined what the problem was what the solutions were like everything that we had to do um um and that's it he sent it out to us and said like you can cancel this this project or this this experiment we don't need it i have all the answers here just do what i'm 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 suggesting here and um we we said yeah this this is great like i think this is this is along the lines of what we want to do but we think it's important to consult other parts of the organization as well to see how it is affecting them and make sure that whatever solution we come up with it also it also uh, solves the problem for for these different parts as well. For these other stakeholders, so, of course. Exactly. So we said that, like for for this part, this is great. This is exactly what we need. So let's keep working on this together, and uh, maybe maybe in one quarter we can have we can have some kind of solution that will that will solve the problem for all these all these different that stakeholders. This person did not react uh, necessarily enthusiastically at the idea of not necessarily doing exactly what he wanted. Yeah, that's that is that is uh, that is exactly So how did it, how did it happen? So, how how did the what happened after you said hey we want to consult other people and we want to hear what these other parts of the organization are expecting? Right. So, so then, uh, when we, when we told him like, this is great, we really appreciate your PowerPoint presentation. This is going to help us a lot. Let's keep working on this together. So he, he started declining our meeting invitations and well, actually first he, he would ask us to change the meetings because they weren't uh, at a favorable time for, for him. And then we said, uh, you know, maybe there are a couple of meetings that we can reschedule, but we also have a larger team. So let's try to, if, even if you can make it to one part of the meeting, that'll be, that'll be great. But l- let's keep the meeting as meetings as they are, because the majority of people can attend them. So that he, he didn't like, and he, he kept on asking us to reschedule. And when we didn't, then he started declining. And then at some point, uh, my direct manager, who was acting as a product manager in in this particular project, he started uh, sharing our progress and what we were working on to to the to the leadership team. And uh, when those emails 
were sent, the, our hero got really angry because we we did not include his PowerPoint presentation there. And he said, guys, like I already solved your problem. You don't need your agile project. Just do what I said and and the problem problem is solved. So it was it was a really it was a really really tricky situation so we really wanted to wanted to work as a team but then there was this one person who and who a just person who had power as well right because they, the others looked up to to him and and the work that he did definitely definitely so it was um it was a, it was a difficult situation but in the end we we kept our direction which was to involve as many people as we can and um and just keep going and uh, and then we were thinking well what what do you think will happen happen next with this person we said well we we don't know like we'll we'll just keep being polite to him inviting him to our meeting and involving him because we think he's he's um his opinion and his knowledge is valuable um but in the end he actually ended up leaving the company um for maybe for separate reasons but also i think one of the reasons was that um yeah he just he felt like he was excluded although which, we tried to which, include him yeah which at that time i think was probably the best thing to do right because it no matter how uh, important somebody might be or how skillful or expert they might be at a particular set of tasks at the end of the day the team is the one that needs to perform and uh, uh, exactly. other, otherwise this person would just be a, um, uh, how do you say, like a, a puppeteer, right? Like just, just give them right. other people to do the work that he already knows needs to be done. And now because we have uh, this uh, idea in Agile of delivering customer value early and often and collecting feedback early and often, we know that it is incompatible to work in the way that he proposed, which is that, you know, somebody who's not a customer knows exactly what to do and how to do it, then mm -hmm. it just needs to be done and the customer will be happy. Well, we don't know, right? Because it could have been that he would have solved all of the problems that he had in his PowerPoint, but still the customer would not be happy because this person wasn't talking to the customers either, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and I think... Um, what we were trying to do with this different approach of having having uh, uh, putting together this little agile teams is exactly because in the organization um, problems were normally dealt with exactly how how he wanted to deal with them. So um, it's always one person that comes up with some kind of a vision of how something should be should be solved, but doesn't take into consideration all the different stakeholders and all the different teams and individuals who will be impacted by that decision. So oftentimes when something big changes, people just get this note like, oh, this is actually going to change. So this is how you will be doing things going forward. And nobody ever collected these people's feedback. Um, and if they did, they those teams could have told them like this this makes a major impact on our work and actually this doesn't work for us at all so we were trying to do it do it that way and actually in the end after this person left things got a lot better and we actually reached our goal of of kind of coming up with a solution that worked for the majority of the teams and stakeholders in involved so i think that was in the end that was testament to uh, to what we were trying to do and kind of show that this is actually a better way of working rather than just having this one puppeteer giving orders and everybody following those orders. Absolutely. That was a, a great story and definitely a, a, a warning to all of those Scrum Masters out there who might still believe that one hero can solve all the problems and uh, although in some cases that might be possible when customer and other stakeholder involvement is necessary that is unlikely to be the right solution thank you for sharing kaiser yeah. thank you vasco tuesday is team day here on the scrum master toolbox podcast but tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams we will talk about how to lead change 
and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.